I will present today, um, it's something we did uh, almost one year ago. Um, you see, uh, uh, 2022 Toshi, <laughs> Hachigatsu, uh, Ju Kyu Nichi. Okay. Uh, it was in Japan. In Alm, uh, which is the company we cooperate with. Um, and, um, <coughs> uh, and uh, well, the, a company which uh, has won a lot of uh, projects uh, for um, um, making research with healthcare data from Japan. So we are very lucky to uh, cooperate with them because we are, have real data which means a lot of, uh, a lot of problems also. Um, not least because the data is in Japanese. <laughs> and I come with my Chilean, like him, <laughs> students to do some work. This, this was not done by him, but um, uh, when I come with my Chilean students to Japan, uh, some of them don't speak Japanese. Some of them did, okay? But uh, what we did uh, at that time was to use some um, uh, healthcare data regarding um, expenditures, uh, healthcare expenditures of the Japanese people of a certain region. I get the data was taken by you, some of the data, yes? the Tsuoyama Hospital, uh, very in the south, that you have to go first with the train, then with the bus, and then with the donkey, yes? So something like that <laughs> to the hospital. <laughs> uh, okay, but it's a big hospital which serves an entire uh, region. And of course, the idea was to predict um, the healthcare expenditures of this population. So, um, healthcare is measured in money, <laughs> healthcare expenditures measured in money, and this is a regression problem. Um, I, uh, I, well, we also use this uh, opportunity to, um, yeah, um, to develop a regressor which uh, could not only um, predict these healthcare expenditures in the uh, next three years, but also uh, explain why, why, what are the reasons, okay? And for that, we based our work in this uh, classifier, which was developed by uh, Sergio uh, some years before. Um, which I will shortly present. Then I will present how we use this classifier in order to give some uh, interpretability to uh, regressors, normal regressors. I will, uh, 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 of course, uh, tell you the results uh, and where uh, did we apply this and, of course, future work. So let's start with the uh, classifier, the dempster Schaeffer classifier, which was the um, p uh, master thesis of Sergio, um, which, uh, well, was a flexible, accurate, and interpretable classifier. Uh, you know, uh, the, um, the aim of a classifier is to predict a certain class of a sample, okay? So it's a discrete, um, problem. Uh, and of course, regression is a continuous problem. So we wanted to uh, yeah, uh, answer question like, how likely is for a man older than 50, like me, okay, <laughs> who has already been hospitalized for digestive and uh, genitourinary problems, uh, not me, fortunately, okay, um, to be hospitalized in the next year for digestive diseases, what is the probability within the next X year that the person with precondition E, for example, 
hemoglobulin, uh, something like that. I don't know how to say it in English, but okay. Uh, it's between 5.5 and 7.5, and uh, diastolic uh, blood pressure between 84 and 100 will be hospitalized for B disease, for example, heart attack. Okay? Uh, so, you know that you have a lot of classifiers and uh, regression um, models uh, which are uh, very accurate or highly interpretable. That means uh, they tell you very clear why they made that decision, why they classified the sample in a certain class or why they um, uh, predicted a certain number if it's a uh, continuous value, okay? And, uh, well, we have deep learning, which are the very ac accurate um, prediction machines, which uh, are not interpretable at all, which are black boxes. So when you want to uh, know why uh, they made a certain prediction, then you should uh, use external um, methods to make some sensibility analysis. But this explains why they made a decision for this record. They will not tell you rules for the entire problems, okay? On the other hand, you know, decision trees, naive bias, or even um, um, linear regression are, are highly interpretable, but uh, these uh, are not very accurate. So our aim uh, was to uh, be uh, highly interpretable as interpretable as decision trees, sacrificing a little bit, and it was really a little bit of the accuracy. So we found our niche. Um, for example, the dempster Sheffer classifier uh, Define two classes to be hospitalized or not hospitalized. That's an example. Okay. And it, given the data that we have, it, um, it, it uh, construct or define rules. Okay. For example, uh, the patient is older than 50 or the patient has what we have already see. So in this dempster Sheffer classifier, you, uh, per, sorry, in the dempster Sheffer theory, uh, which we used for develop this classifier, okay, um, you will start by um, defining these rules, okay? Um, you have, for example, patient is older than 50, uh, you have 71% of be hospitalized, 10% uh, not, hospitali uh, not hospitalized, and 19% um, uh, of uncertainty, okay? Um, this is something that uh, traditional theory doesn't uh, cover, the uncertainty, okay? Which, is, uh, which gives more explainability to uh, the problem, okay? Um, or, yeah, uh, if the patient has this condition, then the, um, the probability of being hospitalized is this, not hospitalized this, and uncertainty that, okay? Um, a very interesting thing is, okay, you can ask experts in this case, uh, doctors uh, to build these rules, okay? Uh, well, what uh, Sergio did is to build these rules from the data. Of course, why not? Okay? Um, and uh, if you have a set of rules and then a uh, sample that you have to uh, classify, then, okay, you select those rules which, uh, yeah, which uh, the, the sample does uh, 
comply with, you apply them, you apply these uh, percentages, and you combine it with what uh, is called the dempster sheffer combination rule. Okay, I don't want to go into details about that, it's another thing. Uh, but then you will have a class, okay? So, how do we uh, train uh, the classifier, of course, having uh, the sample with the results and then defining a lost function and trying to adjust the rules so that this loss function is the minimum. So, this was the... Um, the work done by uh, Sergio, and uh, then uh, the, the work done last year was to have a regression, uh, interpretable regression, combining uh, the dempster sheffer classifier, which I just presented, with any regressor, okay? Why? Because uh, the classifier gives, gives us interpretability and regression accuracy. Okay? Of course, this, uh, uh, the, the aim of this uh, proposal was to predict continuous values, to have interpretability without losing accuracy, and uh, what we found that in, um, in some cases, the accuracy of the regressor even improved. And this is something that we didn't expect. Um, this work is still unpublished, so please don't copy that. <laughs> okay, uh, how do we train this regressor? Okay, um, uh, let's say we have these feature values in the x uh, um, yeah, line, <laughs> okay? And the target value, for example, expenditures in the i value, okay? And you will have for uh, these characteristics, you have uh, that kind of um, expenditures and something like that. So, what we do is uh, we divide this in classes, okay? How do we divide that in classes by the process called bucketing, <laughs> okay? So, you define buckets and um, you uh, define classes. How do you define buckets? Uh, well, there are many, um, many uh, strategies. And uh, this is what, why we still haven't published this, because we still don't have the answer for which is the best uh, way to do this, okay? Um, so it's uh, a work in progress. So after you define these buckets by some um, successful or less successful uh, method, then um, you train a dempster sheffer classifier with this data. So that the dempster sheffer classifier now can predict to which of these four classes, green, blue, yellow, or red, this uh, sample belongs to, okay? And uh, after you have this dempster sheffer classifier trained, you take again the data and put them in the predicted class, which might be slightly different uh, from the uh, real um, value, okay? And... Um, after that, um, okay, after that, we take the, uh, the samples that are in each one of these classes to train a regressor, a different regressor, the regressor you want, okay? So the best one is uh, 
gradient boosting. It's, uh, yeah, it's recognized gradient boosting as the best regressor that we have, and it's non-interpretable. Okay? But as, uh, as long as you have the classifier classifying <laughs> one sample in a class, it gives you interpretability. Why this sample belongs to this class with this themsel Schaeffer rules? Okay? But, okay, it belongs to the class, but what is exactly the, uh, the number, okay? The, for example, the, the, the amount of money that this person will uh, spend next year, okay? So we train the regressors. The regressors have their own curve, okay? And then, uh, if you want to, um, to make a prediction, then you get the sample, you use the Dempster Schaeffer classifier to put it in one of these uh, classes, and then you can interpret why this man will spend so much money, and then with uh, the re regressor corresponding to this class, you will calculate the, um, the exact amount that, well, the model predicts, okay? So, uh, we have, of course, then, um, with the dempster Sheffer classifier, some kind of interpretability, and... Um, with the regression, we have accuracy, okay? So we tried with, uh, sem uh, with uh, this um, standard databases that you can find everywhere in the web uh, to uh, yeah, compare uh, the accuracy of different models. And we tried uh, this with gradient boosting, random forest, a multilinear perception, a linear, um, linear uh, regression, yeah, and fuzzy rule just to compare, just to have a benchmark of interpretability. Okay, and uh, for this uh, movie data set, which uh, has uh, some. Um, Characteristic of the movie, for example, actors, director, uh, budget, and things like that. Uh, yeah. Does your model predict how much money will this uh, movie uh, collect? Okay? And look, uh, for the gradient boosting alone, without Dempster Schaeffer, we have, of course, the best results. But if you, uh, put, uh, if you make all these uh, things that we have done, we slightly improved the best regression model that you know nowadays. And you have, moreover, you have interpretability. Okay? So, well, these are preliminary, <laughs> sorry, these are preliminary results, but they seem to be encouraging. Okay? With Random Forest, we get uh, a little bit worse, but we don't mind because um, uh, even the gradient boosting with Dempster Schaeffer performs better than Random Forest, and Random Forest is not interpretable. Uh, Multilinear perception is bad, really bad. Of course, linear regression is also bad, and fuzzy rule. Um, also cannot compete with us. Here you have, of course, a mean um, error, a mean adjusted error, and uh, uh, R-square. <coughs> so, um, 
uh, here are the rules that we, ca that we uh, created uh, from, uh, this, from training the Dempster Shepherd classifier. So if user, um, if user votes is less than, um, yeah, uh, 112,000, then uh, there is a 38% of mass, it's called mass in the, the Sheffer theory, not probability, because uh, they, um, they don't have to sum uh, 100, well, at the beginning, yes, but uh, in the, in, at the end, they don't have to sum 100 necessarily. When you, combined, when you combine the rules, you don't get necessarily a number between zero and 100. It can be higher than 100. But of course, then we can you normalize to 100 and <laughs> that doesn't matter. Okay, um, so the, the mass to that, uh, this, um, um, that this sample belongs to the lower, um, to the lower class is 38, to the medium 20, uh, a, a, 28, to the higher, of course, zero, and we have 33% of uncertainty, okay? And, well, if the budget is more than uh, something, uh, then um, it doesn't mean that you will have success, okay? Quite the contrary. Interesting. Okay, um, for the medium uh, gross, okay, you have these um, rules, okay, and uh, for the higher, you have these rules, okay. Then we have insurance data, not the data that... Um, we had uh, uh, in Japan, but some data that is in the internet. Um, and here you see also that the best uh, results is achieved by gradient boosting with um, dempster Sheffer classifier, even a little bit better than the other example. And also uh, we can um, have some um, rules, okay, um, for lower val values, middle values, and higher values. We had here three classes, just three classes as you see in the examples, okay? So, um, uh, well, this is something I should say at the end of the presentation, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, most important rules for the medium values are this, and most important rules for the high values are this. Of course, if you, have, if you are older, if you have uh, four children or more, and so, and so on, okay? And this was the results for the uh, patients, um, uh, the student, the Chilean student who made this uh, last year, uh, put the name of ALM patient dataset, but uh, it's not ALM, ALM patient. ALM is the, um, is the um, uh, company which uh, we work with, uh, but the patients are the patients of the Tsuoyama Regional Hospital in Japan. Okay, so Tsuoyama Hospital Patients Dataset. <laughs> Uh, here, you also have gradient boosting improved and being the best. And this is real that data. This is exactly what the Japanese government was uh, uh, expecting from us. Okay? So, here are the rules for uh, lower values, 
Here are the rules for the medium, medium values and here for the higher values, okay? So you see if uh, it was hospitalized, then the already hospitalized, then the probability that you are, all, uh, that you will uh, again been hospitalized and that you will spend more money or your insurance will spend more money, okay, is of course higher. And if your medical expen expenses was more than this kind of points, then you have also a lot of mass in the high values and etc. <coughs> so, um, here you see that um, uh, here you see the table uh, how uh, each one of the regressors uh, improved or um, or um, yeah lower <laughs> uh, their uh, accuracy uh, if you use the um, dempster Sheffer classifier as we used here. And we see that uh, gradient boosting for all the data sets improves its, um, its uh, performance, accuracy. Uh, uh, random forest uh, decreases in all databases except for the concrete database, which, which I didn't show here in order to not to show too many data. Okay. Um, uh, the rest was, uh, yeah, not too much, but, well, we give some interpretability. Uh, Multilayer uh, perception, um, yeah. Except for ALM patients, all the other databases perform um, worse and linear improves. But uh, the good news is that the gradient boosting had the best accuracy of all of them. So uh, you would, uh, you should, uh, yeah, select the gradient boosting, of course. And uh, you will improve the accuracy of the best known regression model and you will have uh, some interpretability. Okay? So, uh, this is uh, what, uh, where we apply this or where we are applying this, okay, in these three scenarios. Um, in future work, continue testing with different parameters of the model to get better prediction accuracy. Um, we can add temporal var uh, variables uh, for, well, this is, uh, these were the conclusions for the um, uh, for the healthcare expenditures, okay, which was the main um, the main uh, problem that we wanted to solve in Japan, okay. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, this methodology allows you to um, combine rules that you get from the data or with uh, rules that you ask uh, someone, okay? So uh, we, uh, well, the, the, the dempster Sheffer classifier um, creates rules from the data, but it, this doesn't uh, prevent that you put also rules um, created by the experts, okay? Okay, 
that's my presentation. I hope you like it. That is, you are, no, it's okay. Uh, you are, as I say, you are, uh, if you have a continuous variable, you are dividing it into, you are. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what. Somehow discretized. Yeah, discretized. That is. Artificially. Yeah, but uh, is it sensitive to the, to the discretization or is it not sensitive to the discretization? Yeah, is it sensitive? For instance, if the, if, if, if the hyper, if the blood pressure is, uh, you can divide it from, I don't know. Oh, yes, yes, that, yeah, is, because something, the, that is something that, uh, as I told you, uh, we have still not uh, published this because uh, we have the same, uh, still we have not answered. No, and the rules also become exponentially large, yes? Because yeah. this is the power set. Ah, yes, yes, we artificially cut the... Cut the lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's impossible to treat it. That's what I Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't understand your question at the beginning, but you're right. Uh, because if you have 100 variables, it becomes 2 to the power 100. Roots, yes? Yes, yes. But we try to keep them, I think, maybe artificially uh, uh, Because, of course, you can set blood pressure. Okay, we divide it in three, and not more than three. No, but furthermore, if you have more, if you have a lot of variables, yes, then the rules become exponential. Yes, it's power set. Yes, yeah, yes. But we, uh, as I told you, so you choose some of the variables. Maybe says you can tell you better, but as I told you, we uh, now are uh, exploring this with rules with one. Okay, we call them the single run data set. Yeah, but of course uh, you could, but uh, you could have more complicated rules and maybe more accurate rules. But this will uh, make the, the the treatment of this problem explode exponentially. So, of course, uh, your model is uh, very helpful to make a decision. Yes, of course, but based on acceptable data. Here, uh, your basic data is the human age. You said 60 age and done. Just would like to uh, remind that this is not an absolutely correct uh, factor. It's a, an, you know, it's a statistical one, and sometimes it will be changed first, and then, uh, you know, uh, it's very important uh, that, uh, you know, statistics sometimes is not the same like individual. So, you know, sometimes it could be 60 years or maybe 30 or even 18. So, uh, just would like to say to maybe it's, it's, uh, if it is possible uh, to make some correction to say not it's absolutely that, it's something like... Uh, um, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, not absolutely not everything is like. Or also something like, like usually say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, is, uh, there is some uncertainty in the rules, okay? And this gives you the, the, yeah, the possibility of saying, okay, the age may play a role, but uh, you might be not very certain these rules should be applied or not. Yeah, but uh, uh, could you imply here uh, not an absolutely like age or something like that, but a kind of statistic like? It yeah. could be more correct. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope we have time for more questions. I hope we have time for, for more questions, right? I have many questions, but maybe two of them. First of them, um, aren't you cheating a little bit by saying it's explainable? Because you're not, also the, the way you presented it at the beginning, 
it's essentially tricking the human into believing that the explanation is for the number. But it's not for the number. It's for the class. Yeah. And as a human, you see the number, and then it is an explanation. And you assume that the explanation is related to the, to the number. Yeah. But it's not. But, uh, it's just for the class. Uh, it, it's for a class, but the class that it's based on the number. No, the number is based on the class. How is the class based on the number, on the, on the price, and the oh, like? Okay. Uh, uh, first, you have to decide how many buckets do you want to have, how many classes do you want to have, and this is also a very uh, yeah, open question because you may decide to have more buckets, which gives you. And, and that's, okay, I, I get that. That's, that's maybe my second question. It looks very much like a piecewise function. Like, like a piecewise function, piecewise defined function, yeah, yeah, yeah. where, exactly, exactly. and it makes total sense that if you look at the, how it actually improves the performance, it makes total sense that something like a linear regressor, which is not able to actually model a complex function, performs much better because, now you just make it a piecewise, so you get away with a simpler function. While the, the neural network part seems to imply that now that you train it with only a subset, it might not have enough training data. Yeah. While it actually was able to predict a complex function for, to begin with, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just interesting to see why. But I mean, I, yeah. it would be. It's not. I don't know. The intuition says I'm not surprised by the neural network becoming worse if you do it piecewise. Uh, if you, yes, yes, of course. But the the comparison see, between gradient boosting and and the MLP the, at the beginning, I totally get. Yes, yeah. I agree. But if you see Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you are right. Uh, the, the, the problem of bucketization is that you have less data to train. Uh, so you cannot have too many buckets because mm. then you will have too few data to train the regressor you want. Yeah, so maybe. But may uh, if, you, if you have more classes, you have more explainability. So that's something that we also have to research. Mm -hmm. So maybe you actually would also want to take, it would be ideal if you could take into account the piecewise shape of the function into actually defining the pieces, you know? So, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you.